What we have today is a special occasion. Uh, we hope that uh, we can begin our league uh, for primary schools, uh, making them understanding what our guidelines are first and foremost. So our league is it's not about competition, winning and losing. It's about learning what goes on in the classroom, also learning what goes on the soccer field. So we can bring them an idea that a school environment is a learning environment on and off the field. So our league is trying to emphasize education first and foremost. So today is an idea of friendship, uh, sportsmanship. So we wanted to see them all in one place so they can see what we're trying to do. And hopefully they can go home and begin training with the proper understanding how the game is supposed to be played. Uh, we've introduced uh, different rules, uh, how to conduct yourself uh, on the field, how to conduct yourself off the field, before the game, during the game, after the game. Yeah, we hope that this will become a, a vision of everybody, young boys and girls growing up, that they play for their schools, their school colors, uh, and, uh, and they, they are learning to become a member of the community with the right behavior, the right attitude. So sports can teach you discipline uh, for school, uh, understanding your body scientifically. We want to talk about those issues, uh, how your body functions on the field, off the field. So Vanderbilt Sports Foundation wants to empower the children to, be, to think themselves first and foremost who they are and what importance they have to the communities. Vanderbilt Sports Foundation is inclusive. Uh, at the same time, I wasn't sure, to tell the truth, when, we, when I was presented with the number of schools in the area of Bandawe Zone, I thought, yeah, how many schools are there? So they gave me numbers. The numbers, the first time we started, we had started with four teams. We went to seven teams. And then now we're up to 10, team, 10 schools. Both, uh, so since 2008, we've grown. So we're now at 10 schools. And one of them is the school of the, de uh, the death at uh, Bandawe, you know, primary school of the death. I'm saying, wow, they want to play? I said, yeah, how are we going to? i never seen a team uh, of that nature. So I had to learn myself. When they explained to me and the, the concept and how they've been practicing and how they've been playing, and how I was assured that this would be a very good thing for them. So today was a good show. I think we all learned something today. Uh, it was fantastic to see these girls play hard, to see the boys play hard. If anything, they are more organized. They are, their attention span is good. The communication skills are better than everybody's. And uh, I thought they, I learned a lot. I know for myself. Uh, I know I'm going to do uh, more things with them. At some point on one-on-one, -on -one, uh, I like the way the goalkeeper played on the boys' team. He's very tentative. I think he's got some skills. Yeah, we have uh, spoken about the American system. Since I grew up with the American system of sport, the sports are very important in America. So I spend almost all my time in the United States. I'm bringing the American uh, uh, system of education through sports, meaning that we can tell the children age one through eight at uh, primary schools. But to, to do that, we need to have an idea what age can we start competing, what age to start teaching. So we're still in the teaching phase. Primary schools, really, you're not doing a lot of coaching here. It's a lot of teaching. Uh, so we have to emphasize teaching concepts. Uh, they're learning the skills, but also learning the game. So we're saying stand five, stand four, through stand eight, they can take part in the actual competition and actual training them uh, two times a week, and uh, sometimes maybe three times a week, and they're playing the games on the weekends. You have to be at least uh, uh, 15 years old, uh, under 15, to be in this league. You have to be in good standing academically. You have to have a passing grade, the way we do in America. Uh, if you're failing, you're not going to play. Uh, you have to be good at attending. Uh, attendance has to be good. You have to be in school. Uh, that week of competition, you have to be in school. Uh, if you miss school, you cannot play. Uh, so we try to encourage it. By saying you'll be under 15, which means any young boy and girl growing up, they want to start school early so that they can play in this league. And then once you finish your 15 years old, you can still go to school, but now you're concentrating 
uh, on just going to school. You're not going to be playing. If you're 16 years old, you can't play. You can still go to school. But we hope our girls and boys, they can start school early and finish at least primary school when they're like 13, 12 years old, going to school. Uh, to school. Right, I mean, this is still a new concept. I mean, football, soccer in the, the developing country like Malawi, uh, it's not something that women are playing at the level that we do in America. So we have to start at grassroots to introduce this uh, concept. We want the, the idea of playing the same sport that boys are playing. We think this will give us a, the gender equality concept in your day-to-day -day life. So we at the stand ones and twos and three, and four boys and girls can play co-ed football. There's, there will be no boys against girls, but they'll be mixed. So they're going to go from stand one, stand four, they're playing co-ed football. And then once we get that concept and empower them with understanding there's no difference, it's just your skill level. So because I'm a boy or I'm a girl, uh, yeah, I think we, we need to develop uh, an understanding that this game is a global game. It's played by uh, a lot of uh, different countries. And the women's game has now developed at the highest level. So we are in Africa where we're behind. So I'm hoping that the village children will catch on to it at the grassroots. And uh, going back to the idea that netball has been the, the women's game and football has been the boys' game or the men's game. So we're trying to put these people in the same place. So we're going to bring them in the same, same field. We brought in a 40-foot container of uh, sports equipment from the United States, donated for, for our friends in America, schools, clubs, uh, parents, and children in in, in, uh, uh, in a, what do you call it, middle school, all the way up to university, uh, have given us a lot of uh, some of the used soccer equipment that they don't need anymore. We've got them here from soccer shoes, football, uh, uniforms. Uh, kids of that nature, warm-ups. We've got all that in our container that uh, has been arriving into about a month ago. So we're taking that, those equipment, and giving it to every school that's in our league. So every school right now should have at least a uniform for practice, a uniform for games. At least a, a dozen soccer balls, or even more for practice, and then maybe half a dozen uh, for their games. So each school will be given a set of, of jerseys and shorts and socks and even soccer shoes we've got them if they're ready to use soccer shoes okay. some of them are not ready yet but we've got soccer shoes that we're going to give out to every school uh, in our league yeah one of the things that we're now we're seeing the with the arrival of the second container compared to the first container uh, first container was a 20-foot container and was limited in number of uh, supplies we brought and uh, to give out all the schools we have now and the need is high. As you can see, a lot of people are coming in asking for help. And not even just schools, now we've got churches, community organizations, they want, they want support. We've got orphans, uh, schools, and, and uh, they want support. We've got uh, we have different, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, even, even a higher level education people, they want support. But right now, our container is you compare the last one, they, they didn't, I think they were, or even I am surprised that it arrived here uh, untouched compared to the first one, which was, you know, it was a little bit tricky when they arrived. I mean, they, they didn't see it. They just saw, uh, it came and went, <laughs> okay? We, we uploaded the 40, 20 foot container and we went with the truck. But the 40 foot container is actually on the ground. That was a, a surprise to everybody. It's a miracle that we're able to uh, to, to bring the container here, also it's staying here as a storage uh, room for the future uh, supplies. And uh, I think the whole, the whole area, people were just sitting there for three, four hours. We, we were able to bring the container down from, from, the, from the flatbed to the ground using manpower uh, without a crane. Uh, that was uh, unique in itself. And for people in our village to see that, I think they, they, they saw the enthusiasm that we have, what we're trying to do. We didn't, we didn't give up on this thing, trying to bring it down and, and saying that, oh no, it's not gonna work. But we worked it out and uh, our people in the village, and they, they stuck with us. We brought it down and now we're sitting on the ground and uh, we, we're looking forward to showing it off. People are coming. We had a nice presentation 
We had the district commissioner was here, uh, was, was represented. We had the uh, Zodiac a radio station was here. Uh, we had a, the local chiefs where they came. The TA Maningam Zoma herself was here with representation last Monday. And uh, the girls and the boys came to, to see for themselves what is in the container. And we took some photos with the district uh, uh, representative from the education program, the demo. And so all those people have seen what we're trying to do, uh, from the district all the way down to the, to the level of the chiefs. So I think that was an idea that we thought we need to let them know that we're serious. Uh, for the demo to come here and the district commissioner to be presented and the TAs to, to be here and to see us uh, have them receive the container. So that was the difference from last one, that this one was received by the whole community when all the 10 schools showed up, they had a representative, so that was fantastic. And hopefully once we grow in Karabi South, we're gonna move on to Karabi Central and Karabi North and East and go all the way up to Mzuzu. Uh, the whole Banda border concept is for, we hope the whole country will, will buy into it and we can use, use this concept to other districts and the other regions in Malawi. The idea of Banda Border Sports Foundation uh, has come about because of my, uh, I guess, uh, my profession is, is coaching. I've done coaching for many, many years. I've done most of my coaching in the U.S. Uh, I started coaching women's soccer as my first in, 19, in the 80s. Uh, one of the official original members of the NCAA Women's Soccer Championship Committee. And from, from that moment on, uh, I've been coaching soccer in the track and field, both men and women. Uh, of course, the, uh, at four different schools, uh, University of Massachusetts, uh, of course, at Amherst College, uh, also University of Wisconsin, Madison, and then from there I went to uh, SUNY Albany, which is State University of New York. Both, of course, again, both men and women, and understanding the, this, the, what I call in America, to be a coach, you, you, you need to have skills, of course, leadership skills. So I feel, I feel fortunate that I've learned a lot in the United States. Uh, playing there and also coaching. So I'm bringing that American concept uh, of what I've used as a coach in America. And for all these years, I think about 30 plus years I've been coaching uh, at a level that's very, very high, uh, at the university level most of the time. And I do my camps also. I do band ball and soccer camps and clinics. And from there I've developed a concept of teaching this game the way I feel it should be taught. Uh, I think I call it the, the African art of soccer. But the uh, people in America, they, are, they know me as Coach Banda, and the soccer is my, my love. It's my first love uh, from, the, uh, from the youth and all the way up to now. So I want to uh, share what I've learned with all through my coaching in the U.S. Uh, and also from traveling uh, around the world, meeting different people. So it has given me a pleasure, and I feel, uh, I guess, the, my faith, uh, God has uh, blessed me. With, this, with these ideas that I can share my passion for sports with others. And I, I feel that it's time for me to do that and to bring that to, to the to where I started off. It was Malangam Zoma, she took a village. And then if I can come back here and continue the love that I have for the, and the passion and have a purpose in life. And I think teaching is my purpose in life and coaching. Right now, the education system needs help, but we cannot I just ask the government and say, help, help, help. No, we want the children themselves and say, what do you need to do to get better in school? I think learning how to read and how to write at an early age is a good thing, it's a good start. And my idea right now, what I'm seeing, I'm gonna emphasize, make sure they're learning how to read and write English. English language now is, a, is an issue here in the village. The children don't know how to speak English and therefore they don't know how they're going to pass the exams. If they cannot read English, how are they going to pass the national exams? So we've had a problem here in testing our children in school. They have not done well. So my program, my foundation was to emphasize to the children, please read. The more you read, the better you're going to become. So I have a lot of books in my container that I'm willing and able to donate to any school that has a reading program. We want to introduce a reading program in these schools. Uh, we began already with Manningham Zoma. 
with teaching us orientation skills or practical skills of English more so than any other subject right now. I'm concentrating now pure teaching English from a practical sense so that when they reach the A, at least they'll be comfortable with the reading and understanding the problems and solving the problems or whatever exams they're going to be given. Because the exam is in English. And somehow I'm talking to the teachers, these children are not, they're not the concept. It's not there. So we're going to change that. We need to be sure to change their thinking about what is important about reading and especially reading English and understanding English language. That's what they need. The children need help um, to do what they need to do. The children need help, but they need the help from the parents. The parents must understand that they are responsible for the children. But the problem with the parents now is that most of them never went to school. And uh, the school has not been the number one objective on the agenda of the day. And, and, uh, 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 so it become a, a, a you know, slip and slap area where they say, well, I've got to take care of the children, I've got to go, go farming, I've got to go fishing, i got to talk about school. So they don't have time to talk about school uh, idea of school because they don't see the value of it. Uh, most of them, they, they never went beyond stand five, let alone stand eight. So we're coming in with this idea that, no, education is the way uh, for you to get better as, as, as people. So you can know what's going on around you. You can only just around your village, but what things can come to you so that when they come to you, you know how to use it. If you don't know how to use the right tools, how are you going to build a house? Uh, if you don't know the right uh, formula, how are you going to give the children, you know, the baby, the drink? You, know, you don't know. So all these little things, medication, we're trying to have the parents understand that they can do things for their children in terms of feeding, uh, bathing, washing, basic skills. Uh, uh, disciplining the children in the, in the right way, talking to the children in the right way, and uh, hopefully the parents will, get, will now get the idea of schools are where to go. We've been here now, we had different coaches have come in to help us, and uh, right now we have a young man who's a goalkeeper from John Hopkins University, he's giving us goalkeeper uh, training. Uh, uh, his name is Madison Wilcox uh, from New York, and I've you know had him at camps in a, in, a, in Albany. Uh, a month ago in August, we had a young man, a, a former coach at U Albany, R. J. Beavers. He was here. He did some clinics and coaching uh, lessons for uh, all for our league coaches and, and supervisors. So that was good. Uh, so it's a volunteer concept. All the people we have here, they're all volunteers. They're not getting paid. Uh, the, the best thing I can get is I get a t-shirt or soccer gear and we, we, so we don't introduce the American concept of volunteerism. Uh, because in America non-profit means non-profit, it means we're not paying anybody. So we take, we're making sacrifices uh, and then the, the local people are learning how to do those things. So we, we're very appreciative for the, the local teachers and the leadership we have put together. Even the afternoon mentoring program, we are using the local, what we call, uh, secondary school students to be mentors, counselors for Malenga Mzoma students uh, the afternoon after school program that we're doing. So we have now, we have uh, what we call community day secondary school students. They're coming in the afternoon on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at Malenga Mzoma. They're volunteering uh, and they're learning skills how to be counselors and giving us hands-on training for the children that are coming to the afternoon program. So we're putting committees, we put the infrastructure in and we continue tweaking it, changing it, and hopefully we have more groups joining in and more volunteers coming. We still need more volunteers, uh, as you can see, because there's a lot of kids, children. There's a thousands and thousands of children who want to be part of this, but without volunteers, it's not going to happen. Uh, we need more volunteers.